I sometimes get the request to help a customer integrate Duo with SAML authentication for AnyConnect with an advanced configuration on the ASA for AnyConnect, such as DAP or Dynamic Access Policies, or uh, using things like uh, LDAP mappings for specific group policies, etc. Um, DAP in particular comes up quite often as these DAP or Dynamic Access Policies, as they're called, are a way for the ASA to, as to apply a special set of controls to an inbound VPN connection based upon things like uh, endpoint attributes or, or perhaps what uh, AD groups or radius uh, groups a user might be in. So uh, th this configuration is not super straightforward from the Duo documentation. We, we don't include that. So I, I thought I'd make a short video to explain how that's configured. Uh, what I won't cover in this video is the basic configuration of configuring the ASA with single sign-on uh, using Duo for SAML. Uh, you can follow the guide on uh, duo.com. I'll, I'll make the URL nice and big here, but it's duo.com slash docs slash Cisco ASA dash SSO. And if you go to this URL, uh, we detail in uh, uh, excellent um, uh, verbosity here, all of the configuration steps to configure both your ASA for, for the standard uh, Duo uh, SAML configuration, as well as how to deploy something called the Duo Access Gateway. Uh, this uh, handles the authentication, the SAML authentication, and acts as the identity provider, IDP, uh, for the authentication. And uh, that uh, configuration is, uh, is very well uh, spelled out in here. So if you follow all the steps, including downloading the certificate, installing it in your ASA, et cetera, you'll have a functional configuration, uh, basic configuration where your AnyConnect users can uh, connect to the ASA via SAML authentication. What I wanna focus on here is how to enhance that configuration to provide for secondary uh, authorization uh, uh, and what that authorization will perform is a lookup into Active Directory for uh, group membership and then apply some special settings to the connection. So here in my ASA, I have my, uh, my connection profile or sometimes called a tunnel group and I've named it uh, AC for any connect split profile underscore SAML. And if I go under my uh, group URL, you can see I have a special URL configured, which is my ASA's host name slash SAML. And I do this so it's uh, easy for me to connect directly to this, to this URL, which will connect me to this connection profile or tunnel group for testing. Now, uh, the, if you go back to our basic screen here, you'll see our authentication method is set for SAML. Uh, by the way, AAA server is always set for local. It's not really local in this case, but there's uh, SAML. It's using the SAML configuration, which is the uh, identity provider here that's covered in the dual documentation. But the trick to getting this to work is to create a authorization. So the ASA supports a secondary authorization, not to be confused with a secondary authentication, which would be validating a password. In the case of authorization, the ASA, after it authenticates the user via SAML, will perform an authorization lookup against whatever AAA server group we configure. In this case, I've configured a AAA server group with the name of my Active Directory domain, and that is a uh, server group of type LDAP with two entries in it, which is my two domain controllers, and I can show you what those look like. So pretty standard uh, stuff in here in terms of my uh, login, DN, etc. Uh, the one thing that's different though is my naming attribute. Uh, if you've ever configured LDAP authentication on an ASA, the naming attribute we generally use to make LDAP queries to uh, Active Directory to look up or authenticate a password is the uh, SAM account name. Uh, and the SAM account name in Active Directory is typically the Active Directory username. Uh, however, for our SAML authentication, we want our users to log in with their email address. And uh, that email address is not the same as the SAM account name, uh, but it, that email address does exist in the Active Directory record uh, known as user principal name or UPN. So we have to tell the ASA that when it makes the, the LDAP uh, authorization lookup 
uh, to Active Directory to pass that email address it's going to get from the SAML authentication to Active Directory and retrieve that Active Directory LDAP record for the user. And in doing so, uh, it's not going to validate the password because this is authorization, so it's just going to send that email address after the SAML authentication is complete to Active Directory. Active Directory will, uh, the domain controller will respond with the LDAP record. And that LDAP record includes things like which uh, Windows groups the user is in. And then we can check for memberships in those groups to do things to the connection, as you'll see shortly. So this is what our AAA configuration looks like. So I have my group that I named after to my domain, and I'm choosing that for my authorization. And that's that. So that standard uh, SAML authentication uh, connection profile will now perform an authorization against Active Directory. Now let's take a look at our dynamic access policy rules. And I have two created here. I wanted to just show a little more complicated uh, configuration. Both these rules are almost identical. The first rule, uh, which I've called uh, employee SAML check, uh, is going to do two things. It's going to verify that the connection profile or tunnel group that we're connecting to is our SAML tunnel group because I don't want this DAP rule to, uh, to apply for connections that aren't SAML based. And it's going to check if the user is in an LDAP group called employees dash BYOD. Uh, and this LDAP dot member of, this is what Microsoft named the LDAP group that holds the Windows groups that the users are in. And as you can see, I've, I've configured this to user has all of the following, which means both of these things need to be true. So in order for this rule to, to be true and the bottom half of the rule to be applied, the user has to be in this LDAP group and they have to be connecting to my SAML connection profile. Now, assuming those things are true, what we have on the bottom of the rule will apply. Now, uh, in order to test this, I, I, I've added a user message. I normally wouldn't do this because I don't like user messages when I connect with a VPN client. Uh, but I created a little user message that says, welcome employee, and you'll, you, your uh, access to the employee network has been provided for your connection. And I did this so I, I know that the rule's working when I connect. Now, the second thing I did, of course, is to actually apply a, a uh, ACL and access control list that adds the subnet that I want the user to be able to have remote access to um, after their VPN is up. So not to be configured with the split tunnel group, that, that's the kind of subnet that will be routed to any connect. But once uh, that connection is up, this ACL will act as kind of a stateful firewall rule for what the user can do inside the confines of that uh, split tunnel group. So if this rule is true, this ACL will be applied to the connection. And I created a second one that checks if the users in the domain admins group does something similar, uh, adds access to a second management subnet. Now these DAP rules are applied in order and they have a priority order. And the reason for the priority order is because, because you can have a deny in one of these rules, but uh, if you don't, they'll, they'll stack on top of each other. So in the case of a connection that matches both of these rules, the, both ACLs will be added to that user's connection and, and uh, they'll, they'll have, end up having access to both of these things. So that's it. Uh, we have our, our uh, SAML connection profile that is uh, not only performing uh, SAML authentication, but LDAP authorization to Active Directory. And then we have our dynamic access policies or DAP rules that are checking for AD membership and the reason why they're able to do that is because the ASA will retrieve that user's LDAP record after authentication. Let's have a look at the client experience running Windows 10 with AnyConnect installed. I'm going to connect to my VPN URL and I've created a special one that is using the SAML authentication. When I connect to this URL, AnyConnect is going to invoke a browser window for me to authenticate. Now, I have my Duo Health Policy configured for this VPN connection to perform a check on the operating system and let me know if there's any out-of-date browser or operating system configuration here. And I could enforce that check, but in this case, uh, I'm, I'm merely going to advise the user that their uh, software is out-of-date and I'm not going to require it be upgraded. 
So I'll disregard that notice, send my push notification to my mobile phone that I'll acknowledge now. And it's going to warn me again. It's Edge is out of date here in my browser, but I'll go ahead and skip that. You'll see I'm successfully authenticated. And now AnyConnect automatically, bring that back up, is connected. And you'll see I have a uh, pop-up message that uh, I configured. Uh, normally this wouldn't show up unless you want it to. And what this is indicating is that some additional policies have been set for this uh, connection. Uh, namely two policies. One that has identified me as an employee and it's provided me access to the employee network and a similar uh, second policy that's identified me as an, as an admin, as an administrator, providing me access to the administrator, uh, administrative management network. And I did this to, to highlight the capabilities on the ASA where even with SAML authentication, we can uh, perform a uh, Active Directory group lookup and assign various privileges or permissions to the connection based upon those group memberships. And there we had it. I thought it might be interesting to show off what the logging looks like, the real-time logging on ASDM, and this is the syslog coming from the ASA. When a, one of these remote access users with AnyConnect and SAML authentication connects to the ASA. So what we have, the, the, uh, the first record we see is a, a, uh, the, actually the, the AAA SAML authentication. Because remember, when the user connects with AnyConnect, they're going to get redirected to that dual access gateway for the SAML authentication, username, password, and push notification generally with Duo and then redirected back to the ASA. And the ASA is going to validate that SAML assertion and, and know that we have a, uh, an authenticated session. And here we can see authentication successful for that user. Now we uh, get information about the user, uh, of course, such as uh, what their, their uh, username is, in this case, the user principal name, the email address they typed in for authentication. And then we process our dynamic access policy rules. So these DAP rules, and I have DAP debugging turned on to see this, we see all the information that DAP evaluated for the rules. And DAP was configured in this case to do an LDAP lookup. So it's going to pull, for example, uh, all the groups I belong to, such as my domain admins group. And if I look down on the bottom, I can, I can see the, uh, the, uh, uh, the details about this log entry. And then scrolling up, I can see the other LDAP attributes that were brought to bear, which connection profile or tunnel group I connected to, and what operating system. And then finally, I can see which DAP rules were matched. And we can see that uh, there were two rules matched here, both the employee SAML check rule and the domain admin, domain admin SAML check rule. So for troubleshooting and making sure that your policy is uh, is uh, applied correctly, this, uh, this logging is super helpful. So, of course, we see all of the, uh, the, the connection finally established and any other settings that have been brought to bear. And I'll go ahead and disconnect that user now from the client. And you can see we get our session termination messages uh, here as well.